Most times in the tutorials we've been doing, I haven't really spoken about cameras or camera equipment. It's always been about lighting. And that really, to me, is the most important point. However, if we're talking about still life photography, which is the subject of this tutorial, it is time to point out that most times you're going to be working on a tripod. And if you're working on a tripod, this type of head, which is a pan tilt head, is a much better solution than this type of head, which is a ball head. The ball head has one knob that locks everything, and it's much quicker to work, but the pan tilt head allows you to individually lock and individually adjust each of the three possible planes that a camera can move through. It can lock the rotation of the camera, it can lock the tilt of the camera from side to side, and it can lock the tilt of the camera forward and backwards. The fact that you can isolate each of the movements individually is very, very helpful in still life photography. So, uh, before we start the photograph, I also want to point out that we're going to be using a Nikon D4 today. And one of the reasons why we're using it is that it'll give us the advantage of being able to shoot video and a still at the same time, or one right after the other, so you can see the actual effect when we add or subtract a fill card or a light to our set. Let's do it. Welcome to today's tutorial. In previous tutorials, we talked about light modifiers and we talked about using fill cards. Today, I want to combine the information that I passed along in both of those tutorials to apply it to lighting a difficult still life subject. In this case, that difficult still life subject is an antique Cartier watch. The watch comes in a leather presentation case. It is presented on a little puffy satin pillow, and the inside of the box is lined with a beautiful satin cloth. But before we can start on our journey about how to light this particular subject, what we really have to do is spend a few moments paying attention to what the watch actually looks like. We have to look at it and we have to make some decisions about how we're going to handle presenting it to our viewer. Come along, the journey is about to begin. Here's the watch we're going to be photographing. The first thing I want to do is bring your attention to the fact that the minute hand with this watch set to 10 o'clock is blocking the name Cartier. I don't think there's any way the Cartier company would be happy with the name of their company being blocked on a watch that they designed and they produced. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the, sec the minute hand so that it's at 10 o'clock, but 10 minutes after 10. And by doing that, the two hands of the watch are going to perfectly frame the name Cartier. So that's the first step in what I'm going to do. The second thing that I want you to notice is that this part of the watch is black because nothing is reflected in it. This part of the watch bezel is black. There's a highlight over here and the background, the puffy, beautiful satin pillow and the satin lining of the, of the watch box doesn't really do anything to make it look three-dimensional. It almost looks like it's resting on a flat surface. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be lifting the pillow slightly and I'm going to be turning it at a 45 degree angle and then I'm going to be turning it back to the camera. Once we've done all this, we're going to start lighting the watch. The first light that I'm going to add to this shot is not a light that is going to light the watch. Instead, it's an accent light. It's designed to light the pillow the watch is resting on, and it's designed to make that pillow look round and voluptuous. I'm going to be using a light with a 10 degree grid on it, and I'm going to place it so that it's just about laying on my tabletop and just skims the pillow that the watch is sitting on. Remember, it's not designed to light the watch, it's only designed to light the pillow that the watch is resting on. Yeah. 
Now that I have the accent light lighting the pillow that supports the watch and I've nailed down my exposure for what that accent light is going to require, I'm adding this second light to start to illuminate the watch itself. This second light is too strong the way it is now and I have to lower its output. One way to lower its output is to add sheets of diffusion material in front of it. So for this light to fit into an exposure scheme with the light that's the accent light, I have to lower its output by two f-stops. I've used some, Bo some Manfrotto clips and two card mat board barn doors and now I'm clipping to it a, sheet, a small sheet of tough set lux. This cuts the light's output by one f-stop. Next, I'm going to use this piece of steel, which is called an angle plate, and I'm going to position it here, and I'm going to put a piece of eighth-inch white translucent acrylic clipped to it. Finally, I'm going to turn on the light to see what I've accomplished. It's looking good. What we have now is the accent light has lit the edge of the pillow here. You can see the shadow caused by this X-Acto blade. It also has lit the Cartier name and the Cartier, uh, the inner inside of the Cartier box cover. At the same time, we've added a light from the other side of the set over that way, which is lighting the front surface of the watch and the lower half of the watch band. But if you look carefully, you'll notice that the top of the band is really not lit at this point, and these links that are holding parts of the expansion bracelet together are actually black. So our next goal is to figure out a way to get some light onto these particular links of the watch band. We now have two lights lighting the watch. One of them is an accent light that lights the pillow. The other one lights the face and the lower half of the watch band. We're now going to add the third and final light we're going to use and we're going to put that over the set so that it lights the top surface of the watch band. The area of the watch band above the face of the watch. To accomplish this we're going to have to defy gravity. What we're going to do is we're going to use a fill card with a handle on it, which is what we showed you how to make in the fill card tutorial, and we're going to put the, the fill card handle into a grip. And then once it's in, firmly in the grip, we're going to tighten the grip basically till within an inch of its poor little life so that the fill card will be held in place where we want it. Then we're going to raise the light stand that's holding the fill card with the handle. We're going to bend it downward so that it covers the top of our set. And we're going to position it so that it's above the watch band that we want to light. We're then going to take a boom with a light mounted on the end of it and we're going to extend it under the fill card and we're going to turn the light on. And once we do that, just as we discussed in the fill card tutorial, this is no longer a fill card but has become a light source all of its own and it is now a bounce card. This takes care of lighting the top surface of the watch. There are still some minor problems to take care of but that is what we'll tackle next. We finished lighting our watch using three lights, each with a modifier in front of them. We have a light with a grid that's an accent light. We have a light that's coming off a bounce card. And we have a light that's coming through basically a small diffusion frame. The problem that we are now faced with is that the bezel of the watch and the band of the watch presents us with 
three different areas where nothing reflects in the surface. The bezel of the watch between the hours of like 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock on the watch face is dark. Between the hours of 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock, the bezel is dark. And the links on the edges of the watch band beneath the face are also black. These surfaces are pretty dead and pretty lifeless. What we're going to do now is we're going to carefully place small fill cards to open up those particular spaces. And once we do that, we will have gotten this thing to really sing. We're going to start with the fixing the 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock problem. I'm going to look through the camera. I see the dark area. I have a, a um, sorry. I have uh, an angle iron with a piece of fill card attached to it with a Manfrotto clip. I'm going to place it right over here and I'm going to move it until it takes care of my problem. I have another small fill card that I'm going to place here between the light modifier over here and this fill card and that takes care of the links on the watch band underneath the face. We took care of the dark area on the bezel of the watch between 3 and 5 by this fill card. We took care of the dark links on the watch band with this small fill card over here. And while we couldn't solve the dark area between 11 and 12 with a fill card, we eventually cracked that issue by using a larger sheet of acrylic for our diffused light source to the left side of the set. Sometimes it's not very easy to find what the problem is and other times it's a piece of cake. The point is, is that you can't give up and you sort of have to make believe you're a pool player and try to figure out where the reflection is coming from or where the dark spot is coming from and what you can put in that dark spot that will reflect light back into your camera lens. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. It always requires patience, but the rewards are really worth doing.